in the previous uh, lecture you saw some of the features of the memory safety aspects of rust programming language like borrow checking and deallocating the heap memory when the variable goes out of scope etc there is one more interesting feature that is ownership feature or ownership model in rust we will cover more on ownership later so while we do exercises but in this lecture let's briefly understand what exactly is this with uh, some simple examples so in rust ownership refers to the way that the rust compiler manages the lifetime of values in memory ownership rules state that a value can have only one owner that is very important and when the owner goes out of scope the value is dropped automatically by enforcing these rules rust helps to prevent data race conditions and other common programming errors now let's see one example here is a rust code where some data is allocated in the heap in the form of string and uh, s is now the owner of that data so here and this code actually it's like copying s to t but this is not actually copy so this is called move here the ownership of s is move to t and after this line s is no longer valid i mean s is kind of uninitialized so s is still exist but it is no longer the owner of this data and uh, if you print t so it would print hello and if you try to print s that would be an error because s has lost its uh, ownership s is kind of uninitialized and you cannot print it you cannot use it unless you reinitialize it so this single owner design thing it will solve a lot of issues first one is there is only one owner so it avoids data races and uh, this would also avoid a double pre problem which we encounter in c programming let's say in c programming we have two pointers pointing to the same data and if those pointers are sent to different functions and if they try to free it then that could be a problem of double free that is trying to already freed pointer so which is an uh, undefined behavior in c or c++ this also avoids use after free issue and uh, efficient usage of heap memory so here the data is not copied remember that the heap still holds only this data so there is no copy of this data it's just that you know the ownership is moved to t sorry this is copies okay so if you want copies of data then you have to explicitly call the clone method which we will see later when we explore the string data structure later so if you look at the equivalent c++ code in c++ also it is possible to do something like that for example here you can use uh, the standard library's move method if you compile this program the c++ compiler may not give any errors but still s is uninitialized here s is an empty string because its data is moved to t here so here you have to explicitly mention the call to move and if you don't use move and if you simply do this t is equal to s then there will be two separate copies of this data that's why remember that in rust the transfer of ownership of a string from one variable to another happens automatically by default this is not just bound to string it works with uh, various data and data structures which are being allocated in the heap memory we'll see that later so in rust you need not to explicitly mention something called move or something like that so it happens by default and please note that in this example rust code after the transfer of ownership the original string that is s in this case is no longer valid and attempting to use it will result in a compile time error so but whereas in c++ code if you try to use s it just prints empty string let's see one more example here here there are two variables s and t both are strings and uh, they are uh, actually owners of uh, these data in the heap and here i make uh, s is equal to t t's ownership is moved to s that means memory pointed by s is cleaned up that means this data is cleaned up automatically now s becomes the owner of this data s is equal to t and t becomes uninitialized so if you try to print the value of s that's a legal statement you can do that so s would print world but you cannot try to print t unless you reinitialize it rust also avoids dangling pointer 
let's see one example in C. In C, we often see this issue. Here is a C code where here we try to initialize this pointer variable P and uh, it calls get pointer function. And unfortunately, this get pointer function returns the pointer to the local variable, which is wrong. Because once this function exits, x is no longer valid. So its address is no longer valid because it's a temporary variable located in stack. Hence, so what this p contains is an invalid address. And if you try to dereference that invalid address, that would cause undesired behavior or even crashes. So this is a wrong code and such codes are possible in C because C would not throw any error unless you consider warnings as errors. It would still give an error, sorry, warning. So if you enable this flag in the compiler. But in Rust, such a damaging pointer issues is not possible, not at all, because uh, the compiler detects that and the program will not compile. So one more interesting feature, some of the modern programming languages uh, have this feature like type inference. Rust also has a type inference feature, which means that the compiler can deduce the type of a variable or expression automatically without the need to explicitly specifying it. This makes the code more readable and less verbose. For example, consider the C statement here, a variable definition where you have to mention the data type. If you don't mention, you cannot think like the C compiler will assume the X as int. So C doesn't work like that or C++ doesn't work like that. But in the case of Rust, you can do this because the type inference feature of the compiler will consider the type of X as integer 32 bits. That is called I32. So we'll discuss various data types like primitive data types and some complex data types as we make a progress in this course. Since because of type inference feature, the Rust code improves readability and less verbose. Now there are other interesting features, some of which we will thoroughly understand in later part of this course, like concurrency and uh, using package manager such as Cargo. Cargo is the uh, official and it's a built-in package manager for Rust. And uh, this you can use to build your program and uh, you can build libraries, packages, you can publish your crates, so many things you can do. So we'll explore that later. Concurrency, Rust has built-in support for concurrency and we will understand uh, this later. Let's not worry about that. And strong typing, meaning Variables have specific type and that type must be respected. We'll see that while doing some exercises. No runtime. So Rust does not have a runtime, meaning it doesn't have a garbage collector like Java. C++ also doesn't have garbage collector. This allows for more control over the program and eliminates the need for a runtime, which could reduce performance and added complexity of a garbage collector. And uh, error handling. It has a unique error handling uh, compared to C or C++. Basically, what happens is in Rust, the so Rust uses return value based error handling instead of exceptions like C++. So C++ implements uh, exceptions using try and catch block. Such uh, exception handling is not available in Rust. Rust uses return value based error handling and that return value is represented with uh, the result and option types. These two are important uh, data types or data structures available in Rust and we will understand uh, these data structures later, which are very helpful while handling errors. These data structures are used to return success or error or no value conditions from functions. So we'll explore them later. So this is one example how the error handling may look like in Rust. This is an example with uh, file handling. And don't worry about these examples. We will understand them later. So whether return value based exception handling is better or exception based error handling is better is a debatable concept. And uh, for a MR system scenario, it could be argued that uh, Rust's uh, return value based error handling is better than exception based uh, error handling of C++. In the next lecture, we will create some simple programs in Rust. For that, first you have to install the Rust programming language. So if you want to try all the code from the online Rust compiler, then you need not to do all these steps. So there is a Rust playground online based tool. 
where you can check your code and where you can compile and run your code without installing any of these things. But in the next lecture, we will create, build, and test simple uh, programs using the cargo package manager of Rust in our machine. So if you want to do it everything from online compiler, then you need not to follow these steps. I'll see you in the next lecture.